Taking money is a mindset. Mm -hmm. The problem a lot of people have is they use their income or whatever they have, right? They use it to pay off their bills. So you're coming from a place of lack when you do that. Mm -hmm. And you can never be rich. You can never stack up money. Okay. What you should do is take your income or get credits, which a lot of people in our community are scared of because exactly. they look at credit like debt, right. but it's good debt. So right. you take credit and you take your income, you invest in wealth, mm -hmm. all right, in an asset, income producing assets. Right. And that asset creates wealth for you. And you use that wealth to pay back your debt. Now, when you're done paying off the debt, what happens? It's still producing your money. Absolutely. And that's how you earn. So a lot of people think you got to be an entrepreneur to make money. No, listen, it's 2022, man. Uh -huh. There's too many opportunities out there, all right? You just got to find something and have an investor's mindset. That's it. You don't want to take your money that you're earning right now and just keep paying bills. How do you get out of the rat race? You got to take that money, get into something. It could be your apartment. It could be two row. It could be your car. It could be whatever. Just learn to leave for free, drive for free, Eat for free. Leverage. Start from the leverage. Leverage. That's all it is. What up, what up, what up, man? It's the kid Pushman Mitch, aka the host of the No Fluff Podcast. You already know what time it is. I'm here with my brother Ike Man, aka Mr. Fluffy. If you don't know who Mr. Fluffy is, man, you better go subscribe to my vibe on YouTube. But guess what? We about to talk about how to get to these bags in 2022. The cool thing about it is we're here to be pioneers to show y'all how to do it first, and then y'all can take what we learned on our journey and put it in yours and then be able to run the game up crazy. So Ike Man, my brother, 20k, 20k? 20K, 20K. You did. Listen, I mean, all we try to do is get people, sometimes it's hard to sell to people how to make $100,000, a million dollars. I haven't made a million dollars yet, you know, right. but it's easier to show people how to get to 5K, how to get to 10K, and when they do that, now they have belief and they can just scale from there. Absolutely, so yeah. it's just like a, it's, it's a way to actually have realistic goals accomplish those goals and then get confidence yes. that's that's what i learned exactly so i always my goal is when i first started out was to make 10k a month everybody that's everybody's basic goal oh yeah. i want to make 10k a month and i'll be comfortable one of my homeboys he told me a long time ago when we were still working nine to fives he was like 10k a month for me i'll be comfortable i'll be able to live my lifestyle the right way but once you get the 10k a month you'd be shocked to know 10k is he, nothing especially he, if you got a business to run no nah, for real so once you get to that 10k you'll be like that's not enough but it was cool that you accomplished it you feel accomplished mm -hmm. and then you go back out there and run plays to to double what you did to get exactly. 20k a month and then 30 then 40 but so let's talk about ways we can start to get 10k a month so let's talk about what you do for a business and then how we can literally implement that into our lives yeah pretty much i teach people how to scale um, their businesses with offers because one thing that i've realized is people just don't make a lot of offers mm. that's all it is they just don't make a lot of offers and the reason why a lot of people don't make a lot of offers is because they struggle with clarity and they struggle with how to give value Right. You can ask a lot of people, you know what, can you um, up your price and all of that? They're like, eh, I don't know how to, I don't have the competence or the confidence. And it's easier than that. Let me just let them in on one thing real quick. Right. Two things you want to learn, and this is an easy fix if you struggle mm -hmm. to find clarity. Always think about whatever service you get or product from the market, from the market to, to you, not from you to the market. It's never about you. You don't exist. Right. So we got to understand that we don't create demand. Demand is already out there. Your money is in the pockets of people. All right. But you got to make the offer. Now, a lot of times people cannot up their prices because they feel like, okay, I just want to try the low ticket. You know, I'm comfortable with that. But the thing is this. Every time you solve a problem for somebody, you just created five new problems. Ooh. For example. Let's talk about that. What, yeah. what does that mean? You for example, five new problems when you solve For example, let's problem. take the iPhone that everybody can relate with. Right. When Apple made the iPhone, they already knew it was going to have five problems. They knew you were going to need chargers. They knew you were going to change your screen at some point. They knew you were going to need music. So they gave you iTunes. So they created all these other offers so they can upsell you. Wow. So if you ever want to up your price, the first question you got to ask yourself, if I solve one problem for you, What's the next five problems you're gonna have? Wow. So if I can position myself or find a way to connect the people, all right, I don't gotta be the prophet. Just the people who already, who already have competence in those problems, I've just succeeded in asking you for more. Wow. It's, it's easier. 
That's now when you say easy, I like to use the word simple. simpler, not it's easy. Simple, yeah, not I'm easy. still struggling with that. Right, yeah, I know because because what happens is w nothing is ever easy. Yeah, yeah. Nothing so is ever too when easy. we when we say that, we accidentally lead people down a rabbit hole that they don't want to go. Yeah. Well, Mitch said it was easy. Ike Man said it was easy. No. but it's not easy, but it is simple, and it really is simple. So what we'll find is like the way you do it is is smart. Let me teach you how to get 5K first. Yeah. Let me teach you how to get 10K. But that bar you just said about more problems happening after yeah. you solve one, that's true. Because every time you solve a problem, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you don't have no money right now. I'm going to show you how to get money by getting into the rental car game, right? You get one car, boom. Now your problem is now you got too many customers, more customers than you have cars. So now you got a, another solution to solve. Exactly. How can I get more cars? How can I get more customers? You got another problem. So that's true. And if you think about it that way, it'll be like a never-ending puzzle, really, for you to figure out how to get more solutions exactly that's a bar dog you know, yo that's crazy so tell us about when you first started right the first thing you started to do and then where now where you're at now it's crazy because time flies i did not realize how time could fly i've been doing this for 24 years 24 years okay and it all happened by I didn't plan for this. I didn't plan to be an entrepreneur. You got to understand, back in Africa, I was raised, I'm a Nigerian. I was born and raised in Africa. Mm. And I didn't know what, what life had for me. I didn't have, know what life had in stock for me. But technology came, mm. and it was the GSM back then. So what happened was, back in the hood, I mean, we, we did everything to get some money. It was cheap money. I'm talking about low coins just to survive in the hood, right? Then I got my first GSM phone. Okay. But unlike America, you needed to get the units to keep the phone running. Okay. And the units cost, let's say an American dollar right now, if I got to, you know, just Ball give a comparison, it. it's like $5 every time. Then I realized $5 could only take me like 10 minutes on a call. So now I got a new problem. I got to spend $10 a day just to use my phone. Mm. That shit was expensive, man. I didn't have a job. I didn't have nothing. Right. So what I did was I got creative and I started, a lot of my friends didn't have it. A lot of my friends' family didn't have a phone. They didn't have a GSM phone back in the 90s. So I used to give them my phone to make a call for like 30 cents a minute, mm. for example. Now, I realized that at the end of the day, with every unit, I was making five times more. I was getting to the $5 for every $5 spent. Mm -hmm. And that shit was like, and they just couldn't let my phone go. People get carried away, call for the longest 30 minutes. I'm like, yeah, shit, I don't care. Shit. You uh, owe me this amount of money. Uh, so at the end of the day, I was making about, averagely, if I got to do comparisons today, like in US dollars, I'll make like $80, $100 a day right that was an eye-opening for me that was like me exactly. saying you know, I, I gotta be an entrepreneur absolutely at this point because you control your own destiny yeah because i control my own destiny and you can get creative and, and solve problems exactly so all you did at that time when you first started was solve a problem i didn't even know what it was he was like yo i want to use my phone that's the same way i started in the rental car business like my car note was high on my jeep so i had to figure out a way to pay that high-ass car note yeah so i got people to rent out my car and then i was like damn i'm making 3200 3800 a month off of this 08 Jeep Wrangler? Hmm. So what would happen if I go ahead and get more of these joints and then get run the play like that? And that's how it leads to, damn, like, so I call it smelling blood. Yeah. So I started what, what, smelling blood. Exactly. When you smell blood, you don't yeah. want to go back. Right. And that's also something that I want to tell a lot of people. Making money is a mindset. Mm -hmm. The problem a lot of people have is they use their income or whatever they have, right? They use it to pay off their bills. So you're coming from a place of lack when you do that. Mm -hmm. And you can never be rich. You can never stack up money. Okay. What you should do is take your income or get credits, which a lot of people in our community are scared of because exactly. they look at credit like debt. Right. But it's good debt. So right. you take credit and you take your income, you invest in wealth, mm -hmm. all right, in an asset, income producing assets. Right. And that asset creates wealth for you. And you use that wealth to pay back your debt. Now, when you don't pay another debt, what happens? It's still producing your money. Absolutely. And that's how you earn. So a lot of people think you got to be an entrepreneur to make money. No, listen, it's 2022, man. Uh -huh. There's too many opportunities out there, all right? You just got to find something and have an investor's mindset. That's it. You don't want to take your money that you're earning right now and just keep paying bills. How do you get out of the rat race? You got to take that money, get into something. It could be your apartment. It could be two row. It could be your car. It could be whatever. Just learn to leave for free, drive for free, Eat for free. Leverage. Start from the leverage. Leverage. That's all it is. Right. So that's the thing. So the, the, some of the key that I picked out of what you said was the mindset piece. It does take the mindset yeah. and understanding how money works because the way you view money is important. Because exactly. some of us view money as uh, something that literally 
is scarce. It's like hard to get money, but it's really not. All of us been getting lots of money before, but we just spending it in the wrong places and getting bills. So like people get their tax return. What they do? Pay all their bills off with it. Yeah. Oh, I got this. I got a lump. I told. I asked my mom. I had my mom on here. I'm like playing around doing a podcast on a live, and I said, "What's the most money you had at one time?" She said, "I had one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars." I said, "What you did with it?" She said, "Well, I paid off a lot of bills that I had first, but the key <laughs> is the key would to be what money that you wasn't even supposed to get, because she got her money from like a settlement or something. She got hurt. They paid her out like one hundred twenty-five thousand. So now this is money that leverage. you normally would not have had. Yeah. Right. So instead of taking that money and paying off bills that you were going to have regardless, you're going to owe regardless, you were going to have to they, pay. They never go. Instead of doing that, why not put it into an cash flow and asset? The mindset has to be there to, oh, let me find another income producing thing to put this exactly. money. Exactly. Because that's what money is for. It takes money to make money. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you have to be rich to make money. You get what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. So the cool thing about it is we all have an equal opportunity here. Yes, we, we got do. an equal opportunity to be able to say, okay, cool. Um, I can decide instead of doing putting my money this way, doing the wrong thing, I can make that right decision instead of making that left. Exactly. And we all we have the information around us. All of us hearing these words on social media, oh, generational wealth. Exactly. You got to have good credit. We, it's not that we don't know. We're just not disciplined and we don't have the mindset. mindset. We don't have the mindset to put our money in the right places. It's not lack of info. I get on, I get on Instagram every day and give game to where somebody can literally take that game and then apply what you just said on the podcast and then go and make millions of dollars. Go make millions of dollars right now. Right there. Right there. But because of the mindset and the give me more, give me more, give me more. Some people trying to get more information instead of doing more execution. Right? They don't want to apply it. I'm glad you said that because for me, I've always done this. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always fed myself. You know, I've never worked for anybody ever. Never clocked in for anybody because I just couldn't... Um, do it you know i just mm -hmm. couldn't get myself to do it because once you smell blood like you said uh, yeah you just got to go find it's, out it it's very hard to go back after you smell blood. now the beautiful thing about that is that has led me to leave in five different countries mm -hmm. because i can just get up and go because i know i got the skills i got the mindsets to come into a place just try to figure out how things work and that's it pretty much and like i tell a lot of people i remember when i moved to the united states and um I lived in Texas for a minute because I was in film. I was doing film, you know, for over 20 years, too. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Atlanta because of film. But there was so much talk about, you know, this entrepreneurship. People were doing stuff. Everything was all over the place. I asked my homeboy that I was with. I said, yo, man, where do I got to leave? And he said, uh, you can afford the south, south side. And that kind of ticked me off wrongly. I'm like, you, you can, I can afford the south side? I didn't tell you, nigga, how much I got. <laughs> but he was like, yes, you can afford the south side. I'm like, no, okay, where do the rich people leave? And he said, what you mean, where did the rich people leave? I said, listen, where did the rich people leave? Because I would rather be a boat or an aircraft washman for a rich dude because I know I got the mindset to get into him and offer help and be of service so he can like me and share the game with me. Because the problem with a lot of people is when you want to learn how to bake, mm -hmm. who do you go to? A baker. When you want to learn how to cut hair, who do you go to? A barber. So why the fuck are you trying to learn how to make money from broke ass niggas like your friends and family? <laughs> Stick around people that make money and they can show you how to make money. Facts. So what I did was I said, you know what? Screw that. You don't have information for me. So I kept asking. I wanted to leave in the right neighborhood. And I found out that in Atlanta where I live, mm -hmm. the rich people lived up north. So I said, I was going to get my spot up north. I don't care how cheap it was. I got a basement. And every time that I went out and started having a conversation, mm -hmm. everybody started talking about credit. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what credit was. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of credit. You got to understand, where I come from in Africa, you got to stack up your money and have money. If I drive my car in Africa, listen, I bought that shit full price. Right. If I own a house in Africa, I built it or I bought it full price. There's no credit happening right. for you. Okay, right. where I come from. So I came with that mindset thinking cash is king. Right. But up north, everybody was talking about credit, credit. Of course I have the same mindset. No, I don't want to owe nobody. I like to work for my money. I like to save my money and get whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. And they're like, dude, man, you cannot scale in the United States of America if you do not have credit. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, I got my first credit. But naturally, you know what happened? Because I didn't know shit about credit. I screwed up big time, mm -hmm. and I messed it all up. Right. Started with a good score. I didn't have no mama or daddy story that messed up my credit in the past. I started it myself, started on the 700s, built it up. It worked out real good. I got excited. 
Start applying for anything, Best Buy card, Macy's card, anything, you know, the <laughs> rooms to go. I was excited, right? Right. And I messed it up, big time. And it dipped to somewhere around the 500s. I'm like, shit, how did I get here? Now, I started feeling what every black man feels in America. Mm. I got denied for everything. Mm. Now, I was in a bad place and I needed to get out of it. So what I did was, I said, okay, cool. Let me pay a company, because everybody said a company could fix you and all of that. I got the money from my editing and filmmaking job. I paid for it so they can help me out with the credit. These guys kept send, sending me emails and letters and what to do and all of that. I'm like, yo, just got my $1,500. I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time to learn this stuff. I just need help. Mm -hmm. To cut the long story short, five months later, nothing happened. And my credit was getting worse. Remember, I didn't have information. I didn't know what to do. Right. Got on the internet. It was just so much information, man. I couldn't put a strategy together. And I like to see things in patterns. So I just, I, I knew I had to do something. A friend of mine told me his girlfriend could fix credit. I'm like, what you mean? You mean people fix credit like an individual can fix credit, not like a law firm or something? Right. I like, know people got <laughs> the skills for this. And she helped me with it. And I raised a lot of money. She's like, you got to pay for it, man. I don't do free work. And that's something you learn in America. People don't do free work, man. People just want to get paid Absolutely. right away. Well, I said, OK, I raised the money this time the second time, and I paid her. In three months, everything just started coming off. That was another eye opener for me, man. I'm like, credits? Then it made sense to me that I've been struggling all this while as a business owner in America. I couldn't scale my business because I didn't have credit. Got it. And I didn't understand what credit was. So I went to her and I said, yo, could you teach me about this credit? And for the first time, she looked at me and the fluff started. She's like, no, this is what I know and I don't teach people like me. Damn. That was deep, man. That caught me deep. Absolutely. And I made a choice from that day. Listen, everything you know, I'm going to get the money, I'm going to get the information, and I'm going to tell everybody about it. Mm. And from that day till date, nobody can shut me up. Like, I teach people how to make offers and scale their businesses with making offers. Mm. But I never talk about offers except to talk about credit and the mindset first. Absolutely. It steps to it. It's, it's, and and, and that's, that's a crazy story, bro, because the way I learned about credit was very similar. But I taught myself a lot by experience. And that can either go one or two ways. You can either get good. Or you can even get real worse. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, and, and, and I run into that problem too. So that's why I started the podcast as well, because a lot of people are in the same position you was when you was trying to figure out how to fix your own credit. Yeah. And then people literally don't want to tell you. Like you was willing to pay and she didn't want to tell you because no. that was her bag. Yeah. So people who really feel like that if they tell the information about something that they do, that they're somehow going to lose their lane as if it's not billions of people in the world, as if it's not... A uh, uh, Macy's, a Walmart, a Kmart, if it's not a mall in every city, if it's not a store in every city that sells the same products as everybody else, and nobody's hurting for anything and it's publicly traded. So I don't understand like that mindset. I, I, I'll tell you what the mindset truly is. I think, first, these are the things that I tell my mentees. I'm like, listen first, if you detest wealth, you can never attain it. Rule number one. You got to love money. You got to love people that have money. You always got to want to be around people who have money. Because if you love that lifestyle for real, for real, and you wish people well, you're going to make money because you've been open to the information. Right. So you start from that. The second thing that I tell a lot of people is wealth is not a pie. Shut the hell up. You guys talk about hidden secrets, hidden recipes. Let's talk about McDonald's. Do you think the owner of McDonald's makes every burger that comes out of McDonald's? No. The recipe is freaking public. <laughs> the only reason why you drive into every McDonald's and every burger tastes the same is because somebody wrote an SOP, which is called a recipe, do it this way, keep it for five minutes, use this exact type of chips and all of that, and it, you get the same taste, period. Exactly. So the recipe is everywhere, all right? So rich people don't hide secrets as much as you think. People talk about Coca-Cola. Oh, hidden recipe. There is a Coca-Cola factory in every damn five cities that you go to. Facts. Somebody has the formula. People have worked for Coca-Cola, got fired, new managers and all of that. Somebody has the recipe. Right, which is, gives well, you those off-brand coca -Cola. Exactly. So making money or wealth generation is not a pie. So we need to change this mindset thinking 
it's a pie. So you know what happens? I split the pie into 10 pieces. You take one piece and I take one piece, what's left? Eight. You mm -hmm. take another piece and I take like six. That's not how wealth works. Wealth is actually a fruit. So you know what happens magically with the fruits? What happens? If I buy one fruit, let's say we have 10 fruits. You buy one, I buy one. How many fruits is left? Eight, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like depleted when you're short-sighted. But what's in the fruit, bro? Seeds. Seeds. Yes, sir. And when you plant that seed, you can grow a forest. So every time that we give out information, all right, you know what you do? You're planting seeds. Now, you can get to the back. I can get to the back. He can get it back. She can get it back. You know what's happened to our community? We don't come from a place of lack no more because we all got it. That's the, that's the facts. That's facts. So that's the key bar, bro. And the cool thing about that is all going to be back to relationships, too. Yes. So the key is now we learn this information and we yeah. give it to the community. We start making a lot of income. So last night I was with uh, Waka Flocka, so I got to keep referring my boy. Yeah. We was talking about the fact that, you know, a lot of people from other communities, they do not mind pumping up the community, yes. their community. Yes. So everybody here, we can all attain wealth alone. And then what happens if we put that into one company? And then build that company up, and then we all sit back as like a board. Yeah. And then we collect yeah. from a system that we all created with all yeah. of our wealth and all of our resources. That is the easiest way to do it. But the problem is that we in our community don't like to share this information. We don't like to work together. And it's because of, you know, a lot, a lot of brainwashing, a lot of different things. Yeah. What happened to us growing up, right? So the program. And, and it's program yeah. from, from years. Yeah, from years. So it's very, very difficult to break that cycle. But we can be the change that we want to see and do that at any time. So now, if we want to do that within our communities, which I do when I travel and do my masterminds, right? I say, look, I came to y'all city. Y'all all came out to see me, yes. But look, y'all don't got to link up only when I'm not here. Look at all these entrepreneurs around us who want to get money, who want to uh, get their credit up, who want to start working together. Y'all build the community within this community. Yeah. And then link up every week or link up every month. And then that's how it starts. Hold yourselves then, accountable. Exactly. Yeah. And you got accountability partners, right? Yeah. And then also you got people to say that, look, he came to the same mastermind I came to. And he got the same information I got. And look where he is. And damn, I'm not there. So that told you that it's not the information. It's me not working because this guy then took off and went crazy. So now, when y'all start getting comfortable with relying information and getting your credit up and helping each other, what's going to happen is y'all naturally will start investing together. When you start to invest together, and then you'll start to see the power of unity. And when you got the power of unity and y'all go in and get an apartment building, y'all go in and start a business, start a new company, start bringing in shareholders, start bringing in all the different things, that's when you start to acquire that real wealth that we all looking for, which is generational wealth. But it starts with relationships and the mindset and a lot of the information that you just said. Being able to have the mindset knowing that we can give out this information, there's no, it's no tax it doesn't to take it. Anything. Exactly. It's no it tax take to it. Away from you. Exactly. So we got to start understanding these things, man. And the key to it is, is it starts with today. Yes. Why? Why we gotta wait till tomorrow? There's no tomorrow, bro. All you got is today. That's it. We gotta start with today, and look in the mirror and say, "Let's go." I, this is not the life I want. It's it's real simple. A lot of people try to make real long analogies, but it's simple. I look in the mirror. This is not what I want. I'm about to change it. Let's go right now. That's it. And then once you make that decision, you gotta stand on what you said. I mean, wealth is not for people who are ready. I think the problem is a lot of people get in their head and they're trying to be ready. Wealth is only for people who are willing. You just gotta be willing. You just gotta want it. Bars. If you want it, just stop. All exactly. right? You know what's so crazy? I was struggling alone. I was doing everything I was doing, but I told myself during the pandemic, you know, because I couldn't film, I couldn't edit, I couldn't do anything because nothing was happening. Everything was shut down. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know where my new money was gonna come from. I knew a lot of people was earning money from the internet. I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to make money in my sleep. Right. And you know what's so crazy? Big ups to you, man. You set the same bars you just dropped a couple of seconds ago. Wow. On live, and you're like, everybody pull up, man. I'm just midtown, you know, all of that. Just come chill. And I pulled up. You did. And when I came through, you were like, listen, it's not about me. The reason why I put this together is so y'all can find each other, find people amongst your network, you know what I'm saying, and just start working. Right. We stayed up in that car park to, for about five hours after you left, past Crazy. midnight. Crazy. Just talking about how we're going to hold each other accountable. And this had nothing to do with you. Right. So for me, it's a two-way street. The problem with a lot of people is you expect so much and you just want to take. And life isn't all about, all about taking. All right. If you ever want to multiply, all right, it's all about giving. Every part of love is all about giving and there's no part of love that's taken. When I met you for the first time, Mitch, and when I meet anybody, him 500, everybody, Dave Shan, the only thing I'm thinking in my head is how can I be of service to them? Mm -hmm. So when I look at people ahead of me, 
It don't matter. I don't care about you knowing my name because you're going to know my name. If I told you I have something to offer, everybody needs something. Mm -hmm. And the first day that I came close with you, I said to you, hey, if you ever need this or whatever, you know, reach out, bro. I exactly. got you. And I did. And you did. I didn't do it right away. Yes. And but you, I, I remembered. Yeah. And I you remembered. Remember. So when people say, listen, you got to get in the rooms. You got to be about something. You got to be willing to give. You got to be willing to buy into that room. You got to spend some money. If you don't learn to give your money, your time, your effort, your experience and all that, you ain't getting nothing. Bosh. It's a two-way street. People up there are willing to give you everything, but you also got to give back so they can recognize you. They can know your name. You can start vibrating when you get in those rooms and they can separate you from a thousand people. Exactly. And that's, a, that's also another gift too. That's a gift to be able to do that and have that confidence in the room about yourself. Ain't that crazy that you got to say is... It's a gift to have confidence in yourself and believe in yourself. I spend a lot of time on lives. I spend a lot of time on social media. I spend a lot of time on podcasts, conferences, trying to convince people to believe in themselves. Not even me, not even the education, not even the credit on themselves because that's the real business. It's not the business. What industry should I get in, Mitch? What no. car should I get? It doesn't matter. It's, what are you going to do? Exactly. You're the business. So I spend a lot of time. Like half of the time I could be teaching and point you in the right direction, I'm spending time trying to convince you to believe in yourself. Mitch, why you got Lambos? Because that's what makes you take me seriously. Exactly. It's brought you in here. You, yeah. you believe in that Lamborghini. Well, attention goes, intention follows. That's it. Yeah. You believe in that Lamborghini. You believe in these chains. You believe in that, that notoriety. And right? you want it to. So guess what? When I understand in-person marketing and I'm convincing you, I, I say I had to spend a quarter million dollars for you to believe in yourself. I had to spend a quarter million dollars for you to believe in yourself, not me. I believe in myself. I'm 100% confident in every single thing that yeah. I do. And people are like, oh, Mitch, how you get this done? How you get that done? Because I'm 100% confident in everything that I do and that I believe in. So people got to understand that you have to start there. Start with self. Beautiful thing that you said that, and this is the way that I address this because I'm from the outside. And when you're from the outside, it's easy to see things differently because when you're in the game, it's kind of hard. And when, before I moved out here, I had a conversation you know, with my dad years ago. I and mean, he said, uh, if you ever want to move to America, I got to tell you there are three kinds of black people. I'm like, what you mean? We got different kinds of black people right now. He said, listen. Let them up, please. When, when you have people that have been locked away from lights for a long time, you got to understand that they get used to it. Ooh. If after 400 years you open up that door, three things is going to happen. You're going to have cats that will crawl all the way to the back of the room and say, I seize that light. I don't trust that light because that light looks like white man. I ain't going there. All right? And they duck in the back. And then the people who go to the door, they're like, you know, I kind of like the feeling of this light. But you know what? I still don't trust it. So I'm going to go play in it for a little bit and go in my darkness. All right? And you got people who just go, is that the light they've been talking about forever? Is this what my father, father, father's been dreaming of? I'm out of here because I hate this. Right. And so what I do is I find three kinds of people because you got to understand this, right? I'm blessed with something that a lot of black people are not blessed with. Okay. And I'll tell you what it is. I grew up even as a broke boy in the streets of Nigeria, the streets of Lagos to be precise, with all these skyscrapers and all of that. And every time that I drove through that downtown or played on the streets, I was lucky and I call it luck. So first, have a culture. Two, I see the billboards with all the big brands you can think of. I don't care what it is. Food brands, clothing brands, whatever. All black faces. Wow. You see what I'm saying? You see what that is doing to my psyche? Absolutely. I drive through, I see the names of the banks, the names of businesses, all black names. Mm. You know what that is? Wow. I see the head of police, head of customs, head of shipping, head of whatever, head of government, even my money, all black faces. And when I became a teenager too, I used to go for concerts and I'm talking 20,000 people. All black, all black booties, all black titties. Oh, so now my boy. question is, what can you say to me, a kid from Africa that black and beautiful? and black and strong and black and built. Can get black and built and all I know is black businesses, black streets, black faces. Mm -hmm. Now in America, I kind of realize it's not the story out here. It's, it looks right that somewhere on the 19th floor is a white man. 
yeah. So there's like a ceiling, there's like a covering, there's like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And prior to when all of you started popping up, mm -hmm. all right? I can literally count how many black successful, successful people that I wanted to mirror my life, like Oprah, Jay-Z, Beyonce, that's it, you know what I'm saying? But right now, cats like you, all right, you guys are like the new superstars, man. That's the life that I want to lead to. We got to be, all right, what people can mirror. We got to be the new standards that people can reach. Because you know what? They know our stories. They know it's not been up to 10 years that we're living this new life. You know what I'm saying? They understand that I can be like them. I might not be like Jay-Z. I might not be lucky like the athlete and all that. But I can be like Poosh. I can be like Ike. And I tell a lot of people, if I sound the way that I sound, and that's why it's important for me to never shut up. That's true. I ain't got the American accent. I can act like I do, but I don't. If five years ago I used to sound like, yes, I am the kid from Africa that just came out here. And now I sound the way I sound. I'm getting better at speaking. Mm -hmm. All right? If I can do it, if I can be confident, if I can believe in myself, if I can get to the bag, you better shut up and get to the bag real quick. Because you have family. You have friends. You got a neighborhood. You got a history. And you understand this market better than I do. All right? I'm out here. I ain't got no family. I ain't got no mama. I ain't got no friends. I didn't go to school out here. And I still came out here and got the same information that you're down to get. So you need to shut up and be like me and be better than me. No fluff. No fluff. Bars. <laughs> okay, so, bro, I appreciate that because a lot of people don't get that. So the only thing I can attest to that is when the Black Panther movie came out, right, and everybody felt so empowered by the fact that it was an all-black cast in Hollywood for a Marvel film that had a high budget. Yeah. And that's because we haven't seen anything like that right Standards, before. Yeah. And the key, the, the thing about that is we don't, they don't understand how that makes a, our perception and our psyche work. So literally that's why they give like the little kids dolls they say which one is the good doll which one is the bad doll they pick the white doll yeah it's just the good and the black doll it was bad. all imposed right it's, yeah. it's everywhere they got santa claus white they got jesus christ white they got all these people who are supposed to be even emojis even emojis everything is exactly. all white the emoji started yeah. white then they had to make the black one secondary yeah. yeah. and start they didn't think about that first first they thought about mm, we're gonna have white emojis so the key is to we have to stop thinking of ourselves as secondary. It's very difficult to do when we've been programmed this way, right? Yeah. So that's why what you're saying is important. So we are literally the the persona. We yes. are literally the the focal point to where y'all can mirror our, our swag, mirror that you don't have to be a rapper, you don't have to be a drug dealer, you don't have to be an athlete, actor, whatever, right? You can be an entrepreneur and make yeah. money. You can own businesses. You can be a regular everyday guy on the street and do whatever you want to do. And just own assets. And you you yeah. know what I mean? And invest and do those type of things yeah. because we're not taught that in our schools. We're not taught to invest. It's so in crazy, estate, right? What not. Even credit. Nobody teaches Nobody, you about credit. You know what I mean? And if they do teach us, it's from people who don't have good credit. So we don't, we can't buy into the message. Exactly. So that's why we're becoming those messengers that they can receive this stuff from. So that was a high level bar, bro. So everything you said is very important. So I hope everybody's paying attention to what he's saying. And then also, I want to bring some highlights into yourself. So you teach people how to do what you do. Yes. Okay, cool. So do you offer a course? Yes, I got a course. He's got a course. Okay, cool. So for my followers, for the No Fluff podcasters, can they get a discount code for your course? First, you can get 50% off just on this, 50%, and only you can make me do that. Ooh, 50% off. 50% five, off. off. Half off. You can't beat that. Um, I, I t I'll tell you how to take advantage of it, if, even if it wasn't half off. Because this is a person who I know personally who literally gives everything he got to whatever he does. And like my brother Neil say, how you do anything is how you do everything. everything. And that's how my brother does everything. So get the course. Um, we're going to have a promo code listed below. Um, I guess we'll use no fluff for the promo code. Oh, yeah, that was no, awesome. No, no fluff, fluff for real. No yeah. fluff for the promo code. Um, we're going to drop the link in the bio underneath. Um, do you want to leave him with a message before you get off the show? Yeah, I just want to let you guys know this, okay? Confidence is hard sometimes, you know, because, like I said, we all get in our heads. But you got to understand this. It feels like going to the gym. Whenever you go to the gym, what happens? You get sore the morning after, right? Now, whenever you're sore, whenever you feel overwhelmed, it simply means it's working, okay? If you don't get sore, it's not working, all right? I know you want to get to those six zeros, and I also know you want to get the six packs. But it takes time, and you got to soar, you got to build, you got to soar. So what you need to do is make sure you show up and do the work so that you can have competence. 
And every time that you keep going back and back and back and back and back and back and you keep showing up, all right, your confidence leads to confidence. If I took you as a kid right now and I look in your eyes and I see the way you move and I know you're a fighter right now and I talk to you and I'm like, I know you're a boxer, man. I think you can fight and all that shit. And you can fight for real. If I put you on a ring on the WWF or whatever it is right now, you're going to get punched the fuck out of that ring. You know why? Because you lack competence. But if I took you to the gym, showed you the moves, worked on you because you got a mentor, which everybody needs a mentor that can help you stay accountable and give you all right, everything that you need to skip the line. Okay, get a mentor first, show up, do the work, competence, keep working out, keep burning out, all right? Keep getting sore. It simply means it's working. Don't get overwhelmed. Never quit, all right? You're going to get the six pack and you're going to get the six bags. No Fluff the Podcast episode, Ike Man, a.k.a. Mr. Fluffy, who is no longer fluffy. <laughs> we out of here, yo. Tap in, man. Stay clean. Thank you. All these whips, I feel like me.